Hey, what's going on, people? Hope you guys are doing good. So you just got your brand new Galaxy Z Fold 7 and you're looking to customize it, but you don't know where to start because you're brand new to the Samsung ecosystem or you're brand new to foldables. This video is for you. In this video, we're gonna go over several tips and tricks to show you how you can customize the Galaxy Z Fold 7. Since the Galaxy Z Fold 7 has two displays, we have an outside display and an inside display, you might want to set them up differently. And if this is the case, you're gonna wanna disable cover screen mirroring. It's probably one of the most important things to do moving forward if you really want to customize your phone. So what cover screen mirroring is, whatever you change on your cover screen is also going to take place on the inside display and vice versa. For me, I don't like this. So let me show you how to turn that off. Cover screen mirroring can definitely be annoying, especially when it comes to placing apps and folders on your home screen. To disable it, you're gonna go into your main settings. Then you're gonna do a search for cover screen. You'll see it pop up right here. Tap on that. Tap on cover screen mirroring at the top. Just toggle it off. Now, when you place apps on your cover screen, it's gonna be different than the app placement on your inside screen. As you can see, I have my folders spaced out here and on my cover screen, they are on that single page. A lot of people don't realize that Samsung actually has some of the best customization on any phone thanks to GoodLock. Now, by default, GoodLock is not installed on your phone. You do have to go into the Galaxy Store and download it, but this app is owned by Samsung. It's done by their developers, so it's meant for Galaxy devices, so it's completely safe. So once you have GoodLock downloaded, it gives you access to a ton of different modules for your Galaxy device, including some that are specific to the Galaxy Z Fold 7. These modules allow you to add some personalization to your phone or just bring new features. Let's start with Registar. All right, so I'm inside of GoodLock. These are all the modules that I have downloaded, but we're gonna dive into Registar and I'm gonna show you a few cool things that you can do with this specific module. First off, you can customize the layout of your main settings. So if I dive into the main settings here, just to show you, this is the default layout, but thanks to Registar, I can go into customize your home settings or settings home and then tap on menu order and group settings. And from here, I can rearrange things. I can take away certain settings if I don't need them. And I can really dial in the layout of the main settings and customize it to my liking so I can find things much easier. Now by default, straight out of the box, if you press and hold the power button or the side button, it's going to trigger Bixby, but you can customize this thanks to Registar. You can have it open any app you want, do different actions, or you can change the assistant altogether. Down here on the bottom, it said side key, press and hold action. Tap on that. You can see various actions here. You could choose to open an app, or in my case, I chose access your Google Assistant, which happens to be Gemini. The last thing that I wanna talk about inside of Registar is back tap action. This allows you to assign different actions or apps based on taps on the back of the phone. So if I tap on back tap action, for double tap, I have it opening Google Wallet, and for triple tap, I have it taking a screenshot. Let me give you an example. So here is a double tap, just quick tap, tap. You can see it opens Google Wallet. If I go back to the settings and then do a triple tap, one, two, three, you can see it takes a screenshot. You can adjust the sensitivity of those taps, and you can also adjust whether or not these actions can take place if the device is locked during power saving mode, or if the battery is low. If you wanna add some custom animations to your favorite wallpaper or create a custom lock screen effect, Wonderland is for you. Let me show you what you can do with it. Okay, so we're back inside of Good Lock. Let's go ahead and find Wonderland so I can show you how to create your own animated wallpaper and the animation effect when unlocking your phone. As you can see, I'll go ahead and demo mine real quick. And see, I have a Goku wallpaper. If I pull up my always on display, it's like the back of his head and it's outlined. And then if I tap again, it kind of takes that outline and then transitions into the lock screen. So we'll go back into Wonderland here and you can see there are several different animated wallpapers that you can choose from. So these are different animations for when unlocking your phone. So you can see that's like an Alice in Wonderland one. But if you wanna create your own, you can just tap on the plus symbol. Then you're gonna import your wallpaper. So I can tap here, pick a photo that you want. So we'll just pick this other Goku one that I have right here. And then from here, I can tap on always on display and we'll use the same thing. Then we'll go back and then tap on that little symbol right here. And these are the different transition effects that you can choose from. So you have like pixelate, you can see it in the background there, ripple, sphere, warp, edge, which is the one that I'm currently using, blur, hexagon, slice, flip, 
slide, and fluid. So say you wanted to use fluid, just select that. Then you can kind of tweak the speed of the effect, the movement, cohesion, and you can apply a mask, which is really cool. So if you apply a mask, now when I turn off the screen, you can see this is the mask. So you can put it over the center of your subject on your lock screen. Now, when you turn the screen on, you can see it transitions. It's really, really neat. Just a cool effect. Now, if you want to bring some animation to your wallpaper, you can do create your own moving wallpaper right here. Let's tap on that. You see you have some presets here. So if I select game, this is one of the presets that you can choose. And as I move my phone, you can see the space shuttle is moving around and you can apply it to your home screen or your lock screen. You could also edit it. So if you wanted to use that, but you know, tweak it a little bit, you can make it a little bit more custom or you can import your own wallpaper. So you can go to gallery. Again, we'll go ahead and import this Goku one. And then from here, I can tap on the plus symbol. I can add another image, some text, a video or different particles right here. These are kind of cheesy particle effects, but then you have particle presets like heavy snow, snow, little snow and heavy rain. So if I apply that and then preview, you can even see the rain bouncing off the ground here. That's pretty cool. And if you're happy with it, you can save it and then you can apply it to your home screen and your lock screen. Clockface is another good lock module that allows you to customize the lock on your lock screen as well as a few AOD settings or always on display settings. Let me show you what you can do with Clockface. Okay, so let me show you Clockface. Clockface is a way to change the clock on your lock screen. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me go to my lock screen. It's the clock right here. Now, typically, if you touch and hold on your lock screen, you can pull up the customization settings. So we'll go ahead and scan my fingerprint here. And then if I tap on the clock, you can see you have your customization settings right here. So here's one. And with this, I can stretch it. Let me go to the original one that I had right here. And when I'm happy, I can just tap done and save. You have different styles to choose from here. You can add weather information and you also have show date above clock. So you can swap that around. But what clock face does is it adds additional clock faces, as you can see right here with the little clock sign that you can choose from. So you have like that one, that one, and several more. But if you want to fine tune these clock faces, you can do that inside of clock face. So let's go ahead and go back to good lock and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So now we're inside of clock face right here. You can see there are so many different faces to choose from. If none of these spark your fancy, you tap on the plus symbol and you can create your own. So you can select your own style here, which is basically the font. Then you can select the format, whether you want 12 hour or 24 hour, select the type, whether you want vertical, horizontal, or kind of like staggered. You can choose the color of the hour, color of the colon, and the color of the minute. On top of that, if you tap the plus symbol here, you can change it to analog by adding an analog clock and then deleting the digital or you can add a text clock you can add a date you can add just plain text you can add another image and you can even add a gif if you want to not sure why you would want to do that but you can so that's pretty cool if we back up you can see we have my clock which is basically the customization that i was just showing you and then we have studio which are a bunch of presets that you can download so say you like this one right here, just tap on it, download it, and now you can apply it as is, or you can edit it and tweak it to add a little personalization to it. But that's pretty much clock face in a nutshell. Keys Cafe is a way that you can create your own custom keyboard on your Galaxy Z Fold 7. Now you do have to be using the stock Samsung keyboard, but honestly, I don't find that to be a problem. The keyboard is great. So let's go ahead and dive into Keys Cafe and I'll show you what you can do. So Keys Cafe is a fun way to add a theme to your keyboard, whether you use one of the presets or create your own. So if I dive into Keys Cafe, I can toggle on make your own keyboard and then select it. From here, I can select simple keyboard. I can edit that keyboard. And when I say edit, I mean you can change like the keys that are behind the main keys. So right here on the Q key, you can see there's a plus symbol. If I want to change that, I would just hold down the Q and then I can go up here and select whatever I want to place to swap out that plus symbol. Uh, you can do this for all the keys. You can also adjust the width and height of those keys as well as the margins. Now, when I say that you can replace these symbols, 
I mean like you can replace them with anything. So up top we have like emojis, we have this type of emoji, we have different symbols, we have uh, websites information here, we have different words that you could use, just a lot of stuff to choose from. If I back out of make keyboard, underneath we have style your own keyboard, and this is where you can apply your own theme. So these are all the presets that you can choose from but you can create your own by tapping on the plus symbol and then going through the template right here. You can really, really fine tune this and make it your own, which is really cool. If I back up on the bottom here, you can apply different key effects. So this is what happens whenever you tap on a key. So if I select this one here, you see behind the keyboard, that is the effect. Um, they have some really cool ones that almost mimic like the RGB mechanical gaming keyboards, such as this one here. If I pull this up, you can see, oh, not that one. I think it's this one. You can see it resembles gaming keyboards a little bit. Now below that we have key color effect, which is the color inside the key. So there's like little paw prints here. I think this one's kind of fun. So you can see the paw prints inside the keys. Kind of cool. Then we have our key motion effect. So we have different zoom in effects. We have like a shake, a rock. So if I pick this one here, and then you can see the key will be animated with that motion. Or if I go back to the zoom, you can see it kind of like pops up a little bit. Now, last but not least, we have sound. We have our system sound, of course. We have retro. We have calm. We have fun. We have pink and we have space. Personally, I think calm is the best. And last but not least, if I back up, we have uh, the ability to create stickers. I haven't messed with this too much, but um, I guess you can create custom sticker sets. Then we have play keyboard games, which is really fun. You can find out how fast you type by doing a sentence practice, or you can play word rain, which you basically have to spell the words as they fall in order to win. So. Kind of fun, kind of cool. You can see how fast you could type. You can get better at typing. And then we have advanced keyboard settings here. You can go through this yourself and see if any are applicable to you. But uh, yeah, just Keys Cafe is a great way to customize your keyboard experience. Display Assistant is another good lock module that brings several new features to your display settings, including the ability to assign refresh rates per app and several other things. Let me show you. So Display Assistant is something new. I haven't used it up until this point, and you can see it's still in beta, but you can find it right here inside of GoodLock. If I tap on it, it gives us several different settings that you won't find in your main settings for your displays. For instance, you can adjust how long it takes for each app to time out. All you have to do is tap on Apps Screen Timeout, and then tap on the plus symbol, and then choose your apps along with your time. If you tap on Keep Screen On, this will keep the screen on for 30 minutes, you're gonna assign a quick setting button so you can quickly toggle that on. After 30 minutes, it'll immediately shut off the display. Then we have our brightness limit profile. From here, we can adjust it from standard to light, and you can see what each does right here. Below that, we have adaptive brightness options. This is how fast the brightness will transition from say, really bright to really dim. You can have it do 1X, 2X, or 4X, 4X being the fastest. And we have reset usage patterns right here. Last time it was reset was never, so I'm not going to do that right now. Below that, we have standard refresh rate apps. So if you want an app to run at 60 hertz versus 120 in order to save battery life, you can assign which apps will run at 60 hertz versus 120. Then we have screen curtain, which it says screen curtain mode puts the screen in doze state. And when the app operates for a long time, you could try it out. So that's an example of it right here. If you double press the side button, it will trigger it. So do a quick double press. Oops. We'll do a quick double press of the side button. And that's screen curtain right here. And you can see it's saying that display assistant is running. And then whenever I want to get out of it, I just double press and that's it. So that's a quick look at display assistance and what you can do with it. Again, it's still in beta, so you might encounter some bugs here and there, but I haven't encountered any in my short time using it. And it's pretty cool. Edge Lighting is a good lock personalization module that allows you to customize the way notifications are shown on your phone by giving you a certain type of animations along the edges of your display. This used to be in the form of like light bars, but they have come a long way since then. 
let me show you. Now it does things like emojis, it can do app icons, it can do a lot of different stuff. So if I go inside of edge lighting and toggle it on, I can set my own custom style. So you can choose what happens whenever you receive a notification. This is the effect. You could choose the color and then under advanced, you could choose, I guess, fine tune the effect a little bit. So you have like bubbles or small little dots. You have like snowflakes or things falling. You have things floating in from the side of the screen. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff that you can do when it comes to setting up your own custom style. You can also set it up by keyword. So if you type in a specific keyword, when that keyword is detected, that's when you'll see the edge lighting take place. You also have show app icon instead of custom style image, which I have turned on. That's the reason why when I received the Instagram notification, you saw the Instagram icon. When I received the text message, you saw my messaging app icon. You also have only available when the screen is turned off. So it will not work if the screen is turned on, but if you want it to take place, no matter what condition the phone is in, you can toggle that off. And then we have our advanced options. You can see for yourself if uh, something is interesting to you, you can just toggle that on. Sometimes apps are not made to be viewed in landscape. Therefore, they only work in portrait. However, there is a setting on the Z Fold 7 that will force portrait apps to landscape. Let me show you where to find it. Now, personally, I don't know of any portrait only apps, but if you do, this setting is going to be a lightsaber. Again, it's under labs inside the main settings. You're gonna tap on landscape view for portrait apps, then select the apps that you want to be able to view in landscape that are portrait only. Uh, like I said, I don't know of any, but if you do, there you go. Backspite preview is a really cool feature that allows you to preview the last page that you were on or the previous app that you were in. Backspite preview is a bit finicky. I can only get it to work in the main settings, but if you're interested in checking it out, let me show you how to enable it. You're gonna go into your settings, do a quick search for labs, tap on labs under advanced features, tap on labs again. Then you're gonna see the option for backspite preview. You can see I already have it enabled. Now when you swipe, you can see a preview of the page right there. But like I said, I can only get this to work inside the settings. So let me know what you think down in the comments. If you know of any other apps this works in, I definitely wanna know. Last but not least, a lot of people ask me where I get my wallpapers from, so I wanna quickly share that. It's called HDQ Walls. It's the best wallpaper app in the market, in my personal opinion. It does have ads, but if you go to their website, you can avoid those ads. They have a ton of wallpapers to choose from. Let me show you where to download it and give you a quick preview of what you can find inside the app. I've been using HDQ Walls for years now. It's definitely my favorite wallpaper app. You can get it in the Google Play Store just by doing a quick search for HDQ Walls and you'll see it pop right up. It's right here. Again, free app. It does have a lot of ads, which is why the low reviews are there. However, if you don't want to deal with that, you can easily just go to their website. So just go to hdqwalls.com. And from here, you can download wallpapers, not only for your phone, but for your PC, for your Mac as well. All right, so that pretty much does it. Those were several ways that you can customize the experience and the look of your Galaxy Z Fold 7. Let me know if you have any tips to add to this video down in the comments below. If you'd like to see more tips and tricks, go ahead and click that subscribe button, followed by the like button. I really appreciate you guys watching this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.